This segment's all about mismatch in analog integrated circuits. So between any two components on an integrated circuit, we will see some variation in those components' electrical parameters. And the amount of variation we will expect to see between one component and another on an integrated circuit will depend uh, on the distance between them, here labeled dx, so that means basically the physical distance between them on the layout, and it will also depend on their physical size. Basically when you make larger devices, any random variations in the manufacturing process uh, kind of get averaged out o over the area of the device. Now, I've used clouds here to represent the devices because this is true whether we're talking about the resistance of a res you know the parameter of interest could be the resistance of some polysilicon resistor it could be uh, you know obviously some important uh, parameter like threshold voltage of a MOSFET or it could be a capacitance value any of these things this is a general uh, model that is applicable uh, to the variation in some parameter of uh, of a device on an integrated circuit. So we see basically, you know, this here is the variance of the parameter of interest P, and we see that the variance is inversely proportional to the device area, the width and length of it, again, whether it's a resistor, a capacitor, a transistor, regardless. And the variance is also proportional uh, to the square of the distance between those devices. Right? Uh, so again, just a reminder, this is variance here, not, not standard deviation. So for example, if the parameter of interest were threshold voltage, we would be talking about the variance in terms of volts squared of that parameter. Now, let's focus mostly on transistors then uh, for the rest of this discussion. And let's first think about two individual CMOS transistors located a distance d apart across a, an integrated circuit. Um, the two main parameters of interest to us where we're going to see variation, uh, where we want to capture or model variation in these devices' performance are, first of all, the threshold voltage, VT0, okay, and also this uh, uh, transistor parameter, K prime, which is actually just equal to, uh, you know, mobility mu times C ox times uh, W over L, all that, uh, that entire product, it's a constant that shows up in many device equations, obviously device current, transconductance, etc. That entire constant is just being labeled K prime here. Um, basically, it, from a modeling standpoint, it's not uh, pertinent to distinguish between a variation in C ox and a variation in mobility. I mean, regardless of which one is increasing by 1%, we will see basically a 1% increase in drain current in the transistor. So we just model all those variations all together in, in K prime. Uh, one thing I want to note here is that variations in K prime, it's been shown are best modeled as percentage variations. Okay, Not the absolute value of K prime, but this here is actually the the you know percentage change if you like in in k prime so and that percentage change right whether it's one percent or two percent change in k prime is inversely proportional to area and proportional to the distance between the devices squared on the other hand we're talking about threshold voltage the variation is inversely proportional to area and proportional to the distance between the devices uh, when you're talking you know uh, squared when you're talking about its variance now these values here, A with subscript VT0 and S with the subscript VT0 and down here we've got A subscript K prime, S subscript K prime, those are uh, uh, constants for a given manufacturing process. Right? So those are not you know, things that uh, can be known a priori. Clearly they depend on the tolerances with which these devices are being fabricated and they are, are numbers that are observed uh, you know with when these transistors are you know in mass production and uh, uh, you know and, and based on a large statistical sample of transistors obtained in a you know that are manufactured in a given process um, and based on measurements of like a huge sample of these 
these uh, devices, then we can obtain, we can fit constants A and S to all that data that, that we collect. And that's exactly what's done and that, you know, is in a good design kit provided to you as a designer. And one thing I want to point out is that, um, uh, you know, there are many analog integrated circuits where mismatch or ma good, a good accuracy in the matching of transistors is very important and mismatch would be uh, problematic. Current mirrors come to mind, differential pairs, obviously these are all examples where you want the devices to be closely matched and whenever that's the case, I'm presuming that you would not put the transistors on opposite side of the integrated circuit. You would locate them as close together as possible. I mean, if you want two devices to match, that's what you you've got to do. By doing that you can make the term in these expressions that's dependent on D, you're going to make D very very small okay, by putting the devices next to each other and therefore these whole second terms become negligible. So really what it comes down to is the uh, mismatch in the threshold voltage and in K prime of MOSFETs depends on the device area. If we need devices to match well you know, obviously we put them next to each other, and then once we've done that, the only other thing we can do is make them large, let's make them big. Now notice, by the way, that, you know, for here, you know, it's the device area that shows up in the numerator, so clearly, you know, if you're doing a design, you can maintain the aspect ratio of a transistor, that is the ratio W over L, which is important in determining things like drain current and transconductance, you can maintain that constant while increasing device area simply by increasing W and L in proportion. So that may be something you you that that's needed at some stages in analog design. You don't want to totally disrupt the operating point, uh, but you find the devices are too small from a mismatch perspective, so you just simply have to make them bigger in all dimensions. Now let's look uh, more specifically at how this model uh, pans out when we're talking about some specific subcircuits of interest to us. So first let's think about what current mismatch arises between two devices, two MOSFETs that are biased with the exact same gate source voltage. So, you know, a classic important example of this is a CMOS current mirror. An NMOS type current mirror is shown here. Obviously Q1 and Q2 both have the same gate source voltage, um, but they, there will be a difference between their current that is purely arising because of random variations in the you know threshold voltage and k prime of q1 and q2. Now again, assuming that we've done the layout in such a way that the distance is minimized, we can neglect the uh, the distance dependent terms and just leave the area dependent terms. And and that's the assumption that's being made here. And what's shown here is an expression for um, the percentage error in the drain current, or the percentage mismatch, if you like, between I in and I out in this uh, current mirror. Uh, and that percentage error will have some random variance. Sometimes uh, a current mirror device, you know, will get lucky and the current mirror devices will have the exact same drain current. And sometimes they won't. And the amount of difference between them will have a statistical distribution and, and it'll be a Gaussian distribution with this variance. The variance has two components, one due to the variation VT okay, and one due to the variation K prime. And here's, uh, you know, it's, it's not difficult to show that this is an expression that, that gives you the error in uh, drain currents as a function of uh, variations in threshold voltage and K prime substituting in these expressions here okay, from our mismatch model we end up with this expression down here. What you see now is the percentage error is inversely proportional to device area. That's not surprising if we want better mismatch in the current mirror we just have to make the transistors bigger. And then there's two terms here. One that depends on mismatch in the threshold voltage and one that's arising due to mismatch in K prime. Now let's drill down into this further and see what happens if we plot this mismatch expression here. We're plotting it on the y-axis. We're plotting the percentage error uh, versus uh, on the x-axis V effective or gate overdrive voltage. Now you'll remember 
this ratio GM over ID here, that's a, a ratio that we talked about quite a bit um, earlier on in the course. And we saw that when we're in uh, active mode, this ratio is roughly equal to 2 over V effective. So it's inversely proportional to V effective. That's what we see in this part of the curve. This is the part of the curve where we're in active mode and we see that the VT contribution to mismatch is given by this dashed line here and it shows you know sort of dependence with with the uh, that goes with 1 over V effective. Okay? As V effective gets very small, however, that VT contribution to mismatch doesn't continue to shoot up to infinity. Instead it flattens out, it becomes a constant because this ratio GM over ID becomes a constant when a MOSFET is biased in subthreshold operation, which it is in this region of the graph where V effective is sort of in the order of zero or you know less than a hundred millivolts anyway. That's subthreshold region, so clearly we get a flattening of that curve. These numbers up here, by the way, these this is the this expression down here plotted with these values of the mismatch constants and this device size. These are values that are sort of representative of a 0.18 micron CMOS technology, and and so these are not you know totally fictitious numbers. And you'll see what's typical is that the VT contribution to current mirror mismatch is. Uh, dominant unless you bias at very, very high V effectives. Okay. Now, uh, for example, in a 0.18 micron CMOS process, it's not likely that you'll be able to bias the transistors with a V effective of, say, you know, a 0.8 volts. That's going to use up, you know, by the time you've got 0.8 volts of V effective and then you've got another four or five hundred millivolts for the threshold voltage, you've used up almost the entire supply voltage of 1.8 volts. And there is no room left for any signal hardly. So um, that's not really uh, that's not really likely. Also you'll be well into mobility degradation operation here which carries with it perhaps some other problems. So, so m you'll, for the vast majority of practical operating uh, points you'll notice that you know you're, you're uh, definitely this the matching here is definitely dominated by threshold voltage matching now this curve that's shown here these percentages correspond to a particular device area and this expression here shows that the entire curve shifts up and down if we change that device area so for example if we double the device area all these numbers get cut in half the y axis gets scaled by a factor of a half or actually in this case, because we're plotting the square root of this expression, doubling the device area would scale the y-axis by a factor of 1 over root 2. So let's look at an example calculation then. Let's imagine that we want to have a current mirror uh, in this, this uh, sort of representative 0.18 micron CMOS technology. So we're presuming these same mismatch constants here. And we've already decided that we're going to bias the current mirror with a V effective of 0.4 volts. And we now want to go ahead and size the transistors to make sure that we have a matching with a standard deviation better than 1%. Okay. Uh, so how large, the question is, how, how large must we make the devices? Well, just looking at this figure, you know, you can see that if you know that you're, we're being, we're going to bias the two transistors at a V effective of 400 millivolts, then the total mismatch in the current is given by the solid black line, which is the sum of the VT contribution and the K prime contribution. Notice the variation in K prime is a constant, so we just get this horizontal line. So um, the total mismatch therefore at that value of the effective is about 3.2 percent. Turns out 3.2 percent is the result for these values of the constant. Now remember that is specifically for a device with this area. It's w times L is actually 0 0.4 microns squared. Uh, it's not millimeters actually, sorry, it's micro, micrometers of course. Now 
3.2% is too much mismatch. Right? In the problem statement, we were trying to get 1% mismatch. So that means we have to improve that number by a factor of 3.2. So in order to improve that mismatch by that factor, we have to simply make the current mirror transistors bigger by a factor of 3.2 squared, which means a factor of 10.2. So therefore, the way to achieve this is to make the device area 10.2 times 0 0.4 micrometers squared. So the device area has to be 4.1 micrometers squared in order to get 1% matching uh, with this value of V effective and in this process. Okay. So again, another uh, um, important example that I alluded to earlier where mismatch is a key consideration in analog design is in differential pairs. Uh, specifically, if there's mismatch between Q1 and Q2, that'll lead to some input referred offset voltage. That offset voltage, VOS, has a variance that is very much related to the variance uh, in the drain currents of these two transistors when they're biased with the same value of the effective. Imagine a case where both of these differential pair inputs that they're, are at the exact same voltage then both Q1 and Q2 will have the exact same value of VGS and will be in a situation exactly the same as this one here as the current mirror. So in that case, Q1 and Q2 would have drain currents that are mismatched by the exact same expression we saw for the current mirror. Now if we want to translate that drain current mismatch into an input referred offset voltage, all we have to do is divide by the transconductance, the small signal transconductance of Q1 and Q2. So that's what's happening in this expression here. The variance of the offset voltage is just the variance in the drain current when biased with the same value of VGS divided by the small signal transconductance. The assumption here being that the offset voltage, whatever it is, is very small. So a small signal approximation is perfectly fine. Um, so that's very simple. We get an expression similar to the last one, except divide, when we divide by, by GM squared, we get some cancellation of, of GM here. What we see is a, a constant term that depends on threshold voltage mismatch and a, a second term that depends that's that's arising due to mismatch in K prime of these two transistors. As we saw uh, uh, you know in the case of the current mirror the first term here the threshold voltage mismatch term will practically always dominate, especially when we're dealing with the m very important case, especially for this course, where this differential pair is the input to an op-amp. We will see later on in the course that uh, if this differential pair is the input to a MOSFET, uh, sorry, is the, is, is the input to an op-amp, then we're going to certainly bias it so that it has a high ratio of GM over ID. And if we do that, it means this second term is going to be very, very small compared to this first term.